Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in again. It's time to get started with another Google Home and Google Assistant new features, new updates, and of course new products, everything that is the latest with the Google Home and Google Assistant. So let's get going. The first thing to talk about this week is actually the fact that this little device right here, the Google Home Mini, was the top selling speaker actually in quarter two of 2018. So this captured 20% of the smart home market, whereas the Amazon Echo Dot captured 18%. Now, overall, what I'll tell you is Amazon is still ahead because their Amazon Echo outperformed the larger Google Home device here and the Google Home Max, of course. But ultimately, we can see that lead eroding from Amazon. Something that you likely expected was the case already was that Google Assistant was available on Android Auto. Well, that hasn't been the case. And it is now going to be the case as Google rolls out updates to Android Auto in a number of countries. Now, of course, with this, there's not going to be a keyboard, so you're not able to type in commands. Google obviously doesn't want to promote you typing into an interface in a car. Now, the countries that will be getting Android Auto pushed out to them, Australia, France, Germany, the UK, and the United States, so kind of all the, the normal countries that we're used to getting these kinds of features first, but there you go. One of the things that we're seeing is called digital well-being, and we know that both Apple Apple and Google have been focusing on that and they've been trying to add that as an extra feature to their phones, to their operating systems and ultimately to the Google Home in this case and the Google Assistant settings. Now on top of that what we're seeing is digital well-being starting to show up in the settings applications in the next APK or the next download of both the Google app and the Google Assistant app. Something that was brought to my attention by actually one of our followers here, Justin Harvey is his name. I'll leave his Twitter profile down below. You can follow him. He kind of follows all the technology space just like I do. And he pointed out that Roku, all of the TVs and the streaming boxes will be able to utilize the Google Assistant. So there's integration coming here right away through your Roku to search for TV shows, movies, etc and go ahead and get those playing on your device. So that integration is right away here coming for Roku. On top of all of this, we've seen Google consistently adding new languages to their list of you know, supported languages basically for the Google Assistant and the Google Home. Now, this week and actually last week, we started seeing Danish and Norwegian roll out for the Google Assistant. So it's not quite on the Google Home just yet, but you can use it with Google Assistant. You're going to be able to get both of those languages. One thing that we've been hearing a lot about is the material theme design, and we've been seeing little snippets of it here and there. But with devices like the Lenovo Smart Display, JBL has one, of course, and you know, we're we're basically on pins and needles about the Pixel 3 here. But ultimately, with those devices coming out. Google Assistant is now getting the material theme design pushed out to it all over the world and what we're seeing is those cards of information showing up when we're asking questions that Google wants to provide a visual response for. Something that's been an interesting trend and I didn't quite understand this functionality until I started reading about it here recently, the Sony Xperia XZ3 is another phone that will have the Google Assistant on board. You'll be able to basically bring it up with uh, the use of the power button, actually. I think you double tap it, if I remember correctly. But it's getting some specialized commands for that device through the Google Assistant. So it's not just your standard set of instructions that you have access to. You actually get a few custom commands with that. Things like manipulating the camera, how it's taking pictures. Simply Safe is a home security system with a $25 a month or $24.99 US a month service fee that you can go ahead and get professional monitoring for. So it's kind of a do-it-yourself system with Simply Safe's hub. Now, Simply Safe has gone ahead and they've created 
integration with Google Home and Google Assistant. So you can go ahead and you can actually arm your system, ask the status of your system, and get other statuses from the Simply Safe security system. Now you do have to have that $25 a month professional monitoring service. Something that I don't think has been out there quite as far reaching as say a device like Circle by Disney is Google's Family Link. Now what this is, is this is capability for you as a parent to limit screen time. Now there are some requirements for what devices you have and what device your child has. They must have an Android device of 7.0 or better and if they don't, you can't limit their time, but you can, as the parent, have an iOS device of a certain level, I think it's iOS 9, but I'll leave a link down below. You can go ahead and read all about Family Link by Google. It's now integrated with the Google Assistant base games to the Google Assistant. We haven't talked about kids for a little while here. We haven't really seen the push from Google on the kids side as hard, but Disney has come along with three games. They are Maui's Music Game, The Disney Princess, and Toy Story Freeze Dance. Now those games are obviously available through your Google Assistant and your Google Home right now. 